Hola, mi nombre es Parra y este es the Indie Game of the Week, Guacamelee, and thank you for watching. Guacamelee is a platforming action game, guys. Luchador up! Um, the game was released August 2013. Again, I may be late to the party, but oh my god, I could care less as Guacamelee literally pile drivers my frigging mind. The game was developed and published by Drinkbox Studios and is now available for purchase for $14.99. There is a lot to cover in this game, but Guacamole is essentially a Metroidvania style game all wrapped up in a luchador mask, guys, in a very, very slick, responsive system, which is going to be very necessary for all the crazy platforming and really fast-paced action in this game. You'll see more, more of what I'm talking about a little bit later on. I picked up the game, guys, and suddenly hours of my life had flown by, and that is one of the best compliments I can give this game when th that kind of happens. So what is Guacamelee? Guacamelee's story starts off very simplistically. Your character Juan, childhood love, the El Presidente's daughter, is kidnapped by the evil Calaca, who is a bad guy who basically wants to combine the world of the dead and the world of the living, and you kind of start your epic journey to uh, stop him, essentially. So, just to let you know, I'm actually going to go ahead and... Um, I'm way ahead of the beginning of the game. So I'm actually going to load, load up again. That's more near the end game. And it, it, spoilers may be ahead, but because this is a bit of an older game, as far as release goes, I feel comfortable showing you some of the more near end game stuff. That being said, my goal for this video is to beat maybe one side quest, show you a little bit of the combat system, and end it all off in my next area in the story to advance. So before we get started here, I just want to note one thing that's very important, and I really cannot stress this enough. You can play Guacamelee with a keyboard, but I would not suggest it at all. Uh, because the game, it's so much better to play this game with a controller. And really, I, think I have a, a crappy Logitech DualShock controller here. So just about any controller I think will work with the system. So just make sure if you get this game, play it with the controller and save yourself some frustration. Okay, so the reason I actually came over here and beat the crap out of these guys, actually I wanted to show you, throughout the game, one of the little things I kind of like about this game, and this is just a minor aesthetic thing, aside from the amazing graphics and all of it's extremely stylized, I have to say, I just love the overall look of the world and the way they designed everything. But there's kind of like these Easter eggs in the game. For instance, we got Busted Bill here, who we all know is actually a shout out to well, Wreck It Ralph. And then one of my favorite, favorite, favorite Easter eggs in this game, and I'm going to actually go ahead and show you something. I just jumped into the world of the dead right now. One of my favorite Easter eggs is right here, which is Fuerte Malo, which is Strong Bad. If you guys don't know who Strong Bad is, oh my gosh. Strong Bad was this old Flash animation cartoon. It was hilarious. But I'd say, I, one thing I love about this game is that it's just the creators really, obviously had a really good appreciation for other indie games. They had a really good sense of humor. And it was amazing. Anyways, that's just one little thing I like about the game. So yeah, you can kind of jump between the world of the dead and the world of the living with just a press of the button. And the reason for that is is that there's certain, I guess you could say, platforms or obstacles that will appear in your way that you can only get to by switching from the world of the dead to the world of the living. And it just adds this entire dynamic to the platforming-esque side of the game. So anyways, my first mission here is I have to find this robbing chicken, I guess you could say. And I'm pretty sure it's over here. Yes, it is. You think you're so smart finding my hideout? Walk, walk! But you'll never catch me. So now we kind of have to play like this weird teacup game. And this is just to show you that not necessarily the game isn't always going to be platforming in action. There's different kinds of side missions. There actually is quite a few side missions to entertain you as you go through the game. You think you all chickens look like, don't you? Well, that's a good thing for me and a bad thing for you. Walk, walk! Come on, boys! All right, he's still in the middle. He's on the left. Right, middle, left. That's him right there. Not bad, but let's see what happens when we speed things up. Right, middle, right. Middle, left. Right, middle, left. Middle, left. All right. Okay, okay, you're pretty good. But let's see how you handle this. Right, middle, left. Right, middle, right, left. Middle, right, left. Middle, left, right. Left, middle, left, middle. 
Still on the left. I guess we're too quick for you. Oh crap, that wasn't him. Your eyes aren't so good, aren't they, Armory? Cluck, cluck. We knew you couldn't do it. I, did I catch him? What a failure. This is quite entertaining. I can do this all day. Okay, what the hell happened? I don't know which one's him now. Dang it, they're all talking. Did I catch him? Okay, crap. Okay, so left, middle, right. Left, right, middle, left. Middle, left, right. <laughs> okay, he's in the middle this time. I could have sworn I kept my eyes on him. All right, I'm going to just kind of focus here. Keep my eyes on him. Oh, damn, I lost him. Damn. All right, well, I have one of three odds. So let's go with this one. Okay, yeah. Point is, is that he has side missions. I'll have to come back and beat the crap out of this chicken and eventually complete that aspect of the game. God knows there's so much else I want to show you about this game. But yeah, there's side missions in the game. Aside from the main story stuff, you can go ahead and do side missions. And throughout the town, you'll see, let me show you this, the kind of the map here. I'm in Santa Lucita, which is kind of like, I guess you could say, uh, the central town of the game. And what you're looking at right here is essentially the entire game itself. Right now, I'm on my way to the Sierra Moreno there to uh, try to stop Calaca from doing something else. I have no idea what. But aside from all that, there's there's quite a few areas you can actually go ahead and jump into. I actually just got done with the uh, Temple of War. So yeah, the game is class side missions. It has, the, of course, the main storyline. There's also puzzle elements to the game. I'm going to go ahead and show you, like I said, the um, the action, the, the, the kind of the action part of the game. Hopefully I can... Uh, okay, I think I can just go forward here. Derp. Derp. Okay. Uh, this is what I was talking about. This is that platforming as thing. These platforms exist on different planes. So if I didn't have the ability to um, jump between between the worlds, I probably could not get to that. Oh good lord. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, come here. Yeah, there you go. I got you, you little bastard. Sometimes the enemies will have like these shields that you need to smash your way through. Oh my gosh. They're kicking my ass. Die, you bastards. And yeah, guys, the action is just so fast-paced, guys. It's ridiculously fun, guys. Sometimes it can get very frustrating, as the game will probably just kick your ass more often than not. Got him. Oh, I got you guys. Oh, yeah, no, you don't. All right. So the game basically kind of enables you to get to these like these power moves, which is what I'm using right there. And what these power does allow me to do, aside from obviously beating the crap out of the enemy and causing them quite a bit of damage, they actually allow me to access different parts of the game, kind of like like these color blocks. You'll see them throughout the area, and each power move obviously has a color. Uh, let's like for instance, I hit uh, B up, and it's kind of like a red power move. I hit B down, and it's kind of like a a, a green power move. And then there's blue, and they kind of you get a lock them throughout different parts of the game, and they allow you basically to essentially kind of go back, back to backtrack through areas, and find things that you may have not known were there the entire time. This is just uh, kind of like a challenge cave, which is actually what I'm showing you guys here. I don't know what just happened there. I think I hit him so hard he may have just self detonated. But you need to come down here, dude. Thank you. Pow! Got your shield down, now just kick your ass. Pile driver! I love that move. That's one of my favorite moves is pile driver. Oh dear god. Okay. Can we talk about this? No? My god. Oh my god, these guys are hitting hard, man. These guys are kind of like bigger, I guess you could say, um, mini boss esque. Uh, characters, they're not like really bosses, they're just kind of meant to be mini bosses. I gotta switch to the world of the dead here, and sometimes that, that's another thing, the enemies will not always be in the exact same plane as you, even though they can, for some freaking reason, hit you. But it adds that, that interesting aspect to things that you have to kind of bounce between the worlds. Oh my god. Okay, hold on, if I can do this right, I can... 
I can actually take care of all these guys at once. There we go. Perfect. And I think... Oh my god. The rooms are getting smaller for Pete's sake. And the game basically allows you to kind of do these insane combos, guys. And I'm probably way out power level this area. I haven't been in this area actually quite a while. Oh my god, not this guy. Oh my god, not again. Please die, sir, would you kindly? Alright, now I can focus on these punks. Ugh, take that! But as you can see, the action is just fast-paced. It's it's really addicting. It can be quite a challenge, actually. Would you just die, dude? Thank you. I'm fairly okay at the game. Oh, yeah, God. Okay. Okay, I gotta switch worlds here and try to beat the crap out of them. Now, this is just one one of the many aspects of the game. Of course, this is the action is probably the main focus of the game. Um, for obvious reasons. But, aside from this, there's also many other ways to defeat enemies. You can use many different kinds of combos. Some of the combos in this game are rather, almost insane. Oh, dear God. Okay. No, you don't. Oh, you bastards. Oh crap, there are more enemies here in the other world, the other dimension, which is not good for me. I can't get, seem to get my hands on these guys for very long, though. You know what? Maybe I should go ahead and just take care of these guys. First, you know, ugh. You know, if they have less health than these guys. Die! Thank you. Alright, now it's you guys. Let's see if I can just get out of the way for a second, regenerate some, uh... Yeah, the top left, by the way, of course, is your health. And underneath that is kind of like your ability to use, um, abilities, I best way I could say. And basically, every time you use one of your super moves, it drains one of the squares. But they regenerate over time, as you can imagine. There you go. I beat that, guys. I got a health upgrade and a, uh, power upgrade. For defeating that challenge. All in all, very successful run there. You're here rumbling in the distance. And at, throughout the end, at the end of this, actually, this tunnel here, guys, there is a, uh, well, that thing right there, which is what we're trying to get to. And what that actually enables us to do is there's kind of like the secret luchador mask that once you collect, you can actually kind of start flying around the board. And it's really, really neat stuff, guys. There's just hidden items everywhere, guys. My point is, is that there's probably hundreds and hundreds of hidden upgrades throughout the entire game. Health upgrades, uh, ability upgrades, different kinds of abilities you can unlock. And it just, it, it really, it wants you to go back and explore the older areas in the game. Let me see if I could show you an example of what I mean by kind of the uh, older areas here. But as you can see, those little blue blocks right there, those are areas I have yet to access because I recently just got at kind of my last super punch, I guess you could say, my last ability. So actually when I go back into the forest, I will go into those areas and use that ability right there to access those areas and see what secrets that may hold. It may hold an entire other area to the board. It may lead me to uh, uh, an upgrade. It may lead me to something. Who knows? It could be lead me to a thousand things. It could lead me to some sort of platforming challenge. A lot of different things, guys. So what else can I tell you about this game? Musically, the game is fantastic. Um, they actually, they sell the soundtrack on Steam. You can actually go ahead and buy that soundtrack if you so so want to. Um, so yeah, musically, the game is really, really awesome, guys. I highly suggest, <laughs> if you guys like the music, go ahead and get that for sure. I'm apparently being attacked by these dinks again. What I like about the game is that while you're playing it, you will get more and more abilities, and the game will constantly kind of keep you challenged. You'll never really get bored 
of what you're doing at the time, I guess you could say. Oh, I just oh, I just accidentally showed you something that I forgot to mention. In the game, eventually you get the ability to turn into a chicken. And you might relate this to Samus Aran's ability to turn into a ball, I guess you could say, as it lets you access areas that are, um, well, only accessible by something that's a little bit smaller than the um, average luchador, as it were. Uh, I'm getting bombarded from the top up there, and I want them to stop. Okay, who is shooting skeleton balls at me, you bastards? Stop it, stop it, stop it. Alright, die, you bastards. <laughs> that was a weird pile driver. But this is the ex next area I'm actually going into. It's the, uh, the mountain tops. I recently just got the ability to kind of access this. But yeah, guys, the there's, you can turn into a chicken. There's several several different kinds of abilities. The game encourages you to explore. Uh, that's another thing. Every time you kind of, let's say, you fail a jumping challenge, uh, you don't have to start over. There's no instant death. You kind of turn into this big blue ball of energy and it teleports you to where you failed the jump. Which is just another thing. It's just a fast-paced game. It doesn't punish you for, you know, failing a jump. I admire your fighting spirit, Luchador. This is one of the bad guys who works for Kalaka. And I have a feeling we'll be fighting him very soon, but you can't win in, in the face of such power. Do not follow me any further. If you do, these mountains will be the end of you. That would be my boss for the area if I had to take a guess. So what else? Aside from the backtracking, uh, unlocking more power-ups, the crazy platforming, the insanely addictive... Oh crap, I fell. <laughs> insanely addictive combat, guys. Um, the game is also co-op. You can actually play this game with somebody else if you so chose. Uh, in the game, let me see if I can show you it. Uh, you know, I cannot. Actually, no, I can show you right here. Um, in the game, there's actually kind of like a second luchador character whom they don't really kind of go into explanation. I think that character does have a name, but I have no idea what her name is. But you can actually, yeah, go ahead and play the game co-op with another person, which is so freaking neat. And I can only imagine how fun that would be to play this game with somebody else. Aside from that, these little things kind of are your ability to rest and kind of it give you kind of a save point. But you can also buy things with money. You can buy abilities and health chunks and stamina chunks. And aside from that, actually, another aspect to this game which I really like, you can go ahead and buy different costumes for your character. I guess her name is Tostada. <laughs> I, I can't make this stuff up, guys. Her name is Tostada. You can buy different costumes for your character if you so choose. For instance, I can buy the chicken costume. And let's see if I can put that on here. The chicken costume gives me more health regeneration over time. My stamina regenerates more slowly. And now I have a giant chicken costume on. Which is just one aspect to this game. You can There's different kinds of costumes. You can actually even make your own costumes. There's DLC. You can make your own costumes and port them into the game. I've seen some crazy ass costume. Mr. Incredible. Venom. You name it. You can make it, just as long as you learn how to manipulate the mechanics of the, I guess, the game. I don't know how to do it, so kudos to you if you do know how. So yeah, co-op, you can make your own costumes, you can buy upgrades with the money that you receive. Uh, the going backtracking and finding different um, upgrades, guys. The game has just so much packed into it, is what I'm trying to say. And it's done in a great, um, very well done fashion, I guess you could say. Uh, balls. Okay, you know what I'm gonna try to do? I'm gonna try to throw this guy into him. Alright. Alright, now these things, you can't, the only way to defeat them, you can't really touch them. Because if you do, you, um. You kind of get hurt by them because they're, well, they're obviously cactuses. Alright, there we go. Oh, I thought I caught that one. There we go. Okay, got that one. Let's see, let's go with this one now. Uh, Alright. Did I get it? Yeah. Did I get it? Yeah! Oh wait, he's in the other dimension though. I gotta make sure to throw it at him when he's in the same dimension as he is. They're not the world's most difficult enemies to fight, but they can be kind of rather annoying. But yeah, guys, the game allows you to make kind of like these crazy combos. Um, I mean, I've seen combos as high as 100. I'm sure there's even higher. 
Oh man, I'm getting my ass kicked. Badly, by the way. Ah, this is so embarrassing. Oh, you're kicking my ass on camera. Oh, I thought I dodged that. So there is kind of like this tumble thing that kind of lets you avoid enemy shots. I'm not very well timed at it, though, obviously. Oh my god. Okay. Let me run away here for a second. There we go. Come here. Come here. You've been a very bad plant today. Ah, I didn't hit that guy in time. I tried, though. Unfortunately, the way to get those guys out of that ground is kind of with that, like, that green shot ability. You have to aim it downwards to hit them and take them out of the, of the ground. But yeah, guys, between jumping through dimensions, different styles of um, crazy platform challenges that you will see in the game. Oopsie. Um, the game also kind of puts you in like, these challenges where it basically kind of forces you to fight several enemies back to back, kind of encouraging, of course, the more action-y side of the game. These guys aren't necessarily trying to kill me, though, which is kind of weird. Maybe I'm just too powerful for them. They cannot kill me. I have to say, I'm enjoying that chicken scene. As you can see, I'm kind of regenerating my um, health as I hit these guys. Which is pretty freaking sweet, all in all. I just, I, to be honest with you, I never had thought to unlock one of the costumes. I'd always spent my money on um, either combat upgrades or health upgrades or something to that effect. There's a giant piñata for Monty money. So yeah, I has plenty of plethora of secrets, guys. Uh, the usual Steam stuff. There is a kind of a, a post-game uh, to all this. Once you actually beat the last boss, which is of course Kalaka, uh, you actually can kind of you are free to roam the game as much as you want. Try to get the hundred percent. Uh, as you can see, I'm actually only sixty-eight percent of the way through the game. But once you get 100%, you actually get, of course, get your achievements, you have your Steam trading cards, what have you. Uh, there's also uh, the El Infierno, which is a kind of a, a platforming DLC that they added to the game. So there's this entire other aspect of the game. And kind of Rogue Legacy style, um, once you beat the game, it unlocks, I guess you could say, like kind of like this new game mode. Where you can actually just go ahead and um, play the game as fast as you can. There's kind of like, I think there's leaderboards for people who have beat the game as fast as they possibly could and it just it adds an entire aspect to this uh game guys so guys i i hope you enjoyed this review i hope i gave you a good idea of the type of game guacamelee is guys it is an amazing game simply put you should buy this game if you enjoyed metroid stylevania games if you enjoy action game this game will not disappoint you with the amount of content it has jam-packed into it I haven't ran into a single bug in this game since I started playing it. That doesn't mean there isn't one. I'm sure there is, but what I'm trying to say is that this guacamelee is all very well designed. It's always fun, always unlocking something to give you more ability to run around the world and kind of mess around and find things. From boss fights to side quests, insane platforming challenges, hundreds of secrets to be unlocked. You can turn into a freaking chicken, man. What more could you want? Alright, so get this game on Steam, guys. I know I'm having a blast playing it, and I can't wait to beat it. Big thanks to the developer for a chance to review this game. As always, like, share, and subscribe for more future indie games. I would appreciate it. I love each and every one of my subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching, and this has been the Indie Game of the Week, Guacamelee.